So in this episode, we're going to talk about uh, creating forms that have multiple submit buttons. So in this case, a good example that I came up with was creating blog posts where you can publish them immediately or you can save them as a draft. So hopping into our text editor, you can see that we already have the publish button in there. And all we have to do is copy this line and paste it in and change this one to save as draft. And then I'm also going to change the button color to a different color so that that shows up separately. So now we have these two submit buttons and we can test the way that the form works by looking in our params inside our Rails logs. So let's go do this. Let's create a test post, some text, and we'll click this, the Publish button here to create it. And then we can look in our terminal and see what happened. So if you look at the last post method, uh, or post request, you can see that the commit message inside the parameters hash was publish. So that means that when you submit these, the uh, the button that is submitted is set up so that uh, the, that it gets submitted based upon the text on the button you clicked. So that's really, really neat. You can have this next post save as draft, and if we look at our terminal and scroll down to that post, uh, that post request now has a commit message of save as draft. And it's as simple as that, so inside of your controller, you can look for the params commit and determine if you uh, saved as draft or published the post. So inside of our post controller, we can create a couple methods here that are helpers that allow us to add the logic into our create and update actions. So I'm going to go down here at the bottom and create a published question mark method. And this is just going to look at the params commit and see if it equals publish. Uh, and then we can also, I'm not going to use it, but uh, you can add a method, save as draft, for the other one um, and have that as well in case you want to do separate logic here in these controllers. So there's a handful of ways that you can uh, update these actions to support this. Uh, one could simply be we will set the published at timestamp to the current time if you're publishing uh, the post. And you could also maybe say if publishing, uh, because maybe this doesn't save and publishing as, uh, or it makes more sense in English and maybe saving as draft. So you can name these accordingly to however you want. You could also move this into here after it's saved. You could update the published at if you're publishing it. I often prefer with going something like this. And the reason for that is because if the post gets saved and any of the publish uh, logic fails, the post will automatically be saved as a draft and you will have it around in case the publish action fails. So maybe you have um, something like when you publish the post, rather than just simply setting the published at date, maybe you have a publish method on your post and inside of there it saves it sets the published at time, but it also goes and tells um, MailChimp to send out an email to everybody saying that, hey, we just published this new post. You know, you don't want that to fail here, so you could um, you could do something like this where if it failed, it would be okay because you wouldn't lose your progress. So I'm just going to go back to setting the published at attribute here um, right after we create a new one in memory. And in our update, we can also add that same thing down here um, because when you're editing a post, you still want to be able to publish it if you saved it as a draft. So that is how you can separate your logic and have two different paths of handling your uh, actions based upon which button was clicked in the form. So let's take a look at this in our browser and see if it's working in the way we want it to. If we click edit, now we have uh, functional publish and save as draft buttons. And if we save as draft, it should still stay a draft. And if we publish this, the timestamp for the published at time is set. 
and it marks the post as published. Now when we edit again, it's a little odd though because now we have a publish and it's already published and then we have save as draft. But if you save as draft, it's still published and it didn't reset the uh, post to a draft. So we definitely need to update the form and say if our post is published, let's add a couple other actions here and then the otherwise we will have the regular publish and save as draft. So here we actually want just an update uh, button and then our save as draft we could replace with an unpublish action. So the unpublish could allow you to unpublish a post. And if we change that, then we need to go into our controller and I'm going to get rid of saving as draft because we're not using it. Um, and then I'm going to add an unpublishing uh, method here and it will look for when the button says unpublish. And this is only going to affect the update action and real quickly we can just say uh, let's set the timestamp to nil if you're unpublishing the post. Uh, obviously, you can refactor this however you like and reorganize it, whatever makes most sense for you. But in this example, we now have the update and unpublish successfully resetting that timestamp there. So uh, that is something that you'll probably need to do most of the times each time the buttons change. Uh, and that's actually a really, really good thing for usability for you to update these buttons accordingly. So hopping back to the form real quick before we wrap up, uh, I've talked about in a previous episode about using the button tag here instead of submit to create uh, an HTML inside of those buttons. So you could have loading animations uh, magically with that uh, data attribute that we talked about in a previous episode, which I definitely recommend checking out if you haven't seen it before. Now, the problem with this is when you do a submit tag, you create an input type of submit and the name is the commit and value equals say unpublish here and you create this tag uh, with this bottom one and that's what's produced however when you use a button tag you simply get basically this button you get update inside of it and close the tag so the benefit here is you can put HTML inside the problem is that you're missing all of this important information. You don't need the type of submit, of course, but you do need to put in the name as commit and the value and match that to the text that you want. So you can change these uh, values with the value option here. Um, and if you want to use those buttons still, you can say name is commit and value and set that to the string that you want. So that should produce the correct uh, name and value and submit those when you click those buttons. Um, I, you know, always, almost always anymore use the button tag now because I can add uh, the loading animations to it and etc. But um, if you're fine just using the submit tag, that's really easy and that's the way to go. Uh, and the other thing to mention before we leave is that if you uh, make a JavaScript form out of this, you're going to run into a little bit of trouble. So this is um, basically going to have the jQuery UJS uh, library take a look at this form. When you click any of these submit buttons, it's going to serialize the form. And that means that it's going to look at every single one of these. Uh, and then submit that value and create a JSON hash and submit that over basically. So that is going to cause some problems because it will serialize all of these uh, at the same time because it doesn't really know how to, to do that separately. So you're going to have to write some JavaScript to handle this accordingly. Uh, but it's really not too bad. So maybe you have a hidden field that you'll update um, with the action. So maybe you're using the button tags and then when you click on one of these buttons, you'll have JavaScript intercept it, intercept it submit a hidden field with that same name uh, or something like that. So that's up to you to 
dive into it if you're interested, and we'll probably also cover it in a future episode, but not in this one. So that is that wraps up how to create forms with multiple buttons. And of course, as anything goes, uh, you start simply and think you just need two buttons, but then pretty quickly you need four and so on. So uh, I hope you found this interesting. It certainly makes life a lot better for your users because it's a really fantastic uh, way to add a little bit extra usability into your applications.